Collisions occur around us all the time. Some of them are dramatic and dangerous. Some are catastrophic. Others are small or seemingly insignificant. To understand collisions and why objects behave in certain ways, we need to know about some important principles of physics, like Newton's laws of motion, energy and useful variables. A collision occurs when two or more objects interact, causing a change in their motion. Forces are present in any collision. There is a push or pull, or both, when the objects interact. When someone is swimming, they apply a force to the water, pushing it back behind them. But there is also an equal and opposite force applied by the water to the swimmer, which pushes them forward. When a force is applied to an object to move it a certain distance, we call the amount of energy used work. It's well known that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy comes in different forms. Kinetic, thermal, gravitational, potential, electrical and electromagnetic and it constantly changes from one form to another. For example, this light source is transforming electrical energy into electromagnetic energy. A rocket falling to Earth is transforming gravitational potential energy into kinetic and thermal energy. Bouncing on a trampoline is a constant transformation between gravitational and elastic potential energy and kinetic energy. In a car accident, the kinetic energy of the moving car is transformed into other forms, such as heat and sound. When a football is kicked, most of the kinetic energy of the player's leg is transferred to the ball, but some of it is transformed to sound and heat energy. The total amount of energy never changes, but exactly how much of each form of energy changes constantly. An elastic collision is when there is no loss of kinetic energy. Snooker balls hitting each other, or a tennis player hitting the ball, are close to elastic collisions. Very little kinetic energy is transformed to other forms of energy during the collision. Inelastic collisions occur when kinetic energy is transformed to other forms of energy. Some of the variables measured when describing collisions are scalar quantities, while others are vector quantities. Scalars are quantities that are fully described by a magnitude or numerical value alone. Speed is a familiar scalar quantity in everyday life. Speed measures how fast an object is travelling and is defined as the distance travelled over a given length of time. Various units of speed are used. Familiar ones include miles or kilometres per hour. However, in science, the standard unit of speed is metres per second. On the other hand, vectors are quantities that involve a magnitude and a direction. Displacement, velocity and acceleration are all vector quantities. Displacement is a vector quantity. It measures overall change in position. 
Velocity is a vector quantity involving the speed of an object in a given direction. Velocity is also measured in meters per second, but in a particular direction, such as north or southwest. Or, we may say, a skydiver falls at a velocity of 37 meters per second downward. Acceleration is another vector quantity. It refers to the change in velocity over time and is measured in meters per second per second or meters per second squared. During their time in the air, a trampolinist experiences a downward acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared, if we ignore air resistance. Gravitational acceleration is the same for any object falling towards the Earth, whether it's a feather or a hammer. It's only air resistance that makes some objects fall more slowly than others. This was demonstrated on the Moon, where there is no air and therefore no air resistance. On the Apollo 15 mission, Commander David Scott dropped a hammer and a feather on live TV. Both objects fell to the Moon's surface at the same rate, although much more slowly than on Earth. This is because the Moon is smaller than the Earth in mass, therefore its gravitational force is weaker and the acceleration due to gravity is less. The physics of collisions can be simple or complex. But how colliding objects behave can always be described in terms of Newton's first law of motion. The transfer and transformation of energy and a range of variable scalar and vector quantities.